the Misconceptions, a program that is committed to rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm your host, Romel Gassain, and today we have with us Terry Arnold, who will be discussing with us some common misconceptions about Christianity. Welcome to the show, Terry. Thank you, Romel. It's a real pleasure to have you come here and share some of your insights with us. Now, what I would like to do is, before we do actually get started and asking some of those tough questions, let's learn a little bit about yourself. Tell us about yourself, where you grew up and how you became a Christian. Well, I grew up in, in Sydney and um, born to a religious family and not really understanding very much about the Bible. We had the Bible on the shelf at home, but, but I never actually read it. Um, eventually, when I was in my 20s, I was challenged by, by some born-again Christians to, to follow what the Bible said instead of following what a religion would teach. And so I'd heard this term for the first time that one had to be born again yes, to enter hear, into the kingdom of lot. heaven. Yes. And that didn't, really un that didn't really make very much sense to me. Uh, and so eventually I, I was challenged as to what does this term mean? And am I going into the kingdom of heaven if I am not born again, as they say, and if I am just following a religion? Mm. So there's definitely a difference between being born in a Christian family and one who actually comes to acknowledge, learn about Christianity. Is, is there anything else that's involved in that? There is a big difference between religion and between Christianity. True Christianity is biblical Christianity, which is about being born again. And I stress that word, you know, again. Um, and, you know, this is what uh, this is what I had to learn for, for myself by looking at the Bible, by reading the Bible and by asking Christians uh, w what this actually means. You can be born into a religion, you can be born into a family, but to be born again can be very different to those terms. Mm. And, I, and I believe as you grew up, this impacted your life so much that it shaped you as a person and you felt that w there was a particular calling a calling to a ministry. Maybe if you can explain a little bit about that. I felt a, a calling because when I began to study the religion that I was involved in and I began to study the Bible, I found that there was such a huge difference and I wanted to make this really clear uh, to people. Um, and so when I became a Christian and that, you know, that is a born again Christian, I wanted to exp explain to people that you can be following a religion and yet not truly be born again. And so, you know, the misconceptions that people have when they follow a religion, it can be a set of rules and regulations, and, but they may not understand um, that it is God that has to work on your heart and that you, you, you have to be born again. You have to be changed from the inside out. Religion can change you from the outside. You can do, you can do many outside things. You can um, uh, partake in the sacraments, you can do works, uh, and these are all things that you can do from the outside. But to be born again is to be changed from the inside, and then your outside changes from that. And I think this understanding of being born again is very misunderstood by a lot of people who might be just following a religion. That really makes sense because when we read the gospel specifically, when the Lord Jesus came and he began his official ministry, who was it that he actually went to? He actually went to the religious people. Mm. And so it's really important for people to go back to the Bible. I mean, that's the compass. That's, that's really the, the center uh, of our understanding of who God is and what he requires of us. They need to go back to that and to see what they're doing. Is it according to what God has left us with? Mm. That is the Holy Scriptures. And I think you do find this. You find that Jesus, one of the, the people that he really challenged was the Pharisees. He challenged the religious people who were following their own rules and laws and regulations. Uh, and he was um, trying to convince them that following those rules and having that kind of righteousness is not going to get you in, into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said that um, you can have the righteousness uh, this, exactly the same as the Pharisees and still not not enter into the kingdom of heaven. The righteousness that we need is the righteousness of another and that's the righteousness of God. And it's, so it's a substitute righteousness uh, and, and that is what being born again is about. And that must have really hit them in the face. You know, like these were people who were supposedly religious. 
they were teaching others how to be religious. And he was this, the, the Lord Jesus, this man who came and said to them, look, un unless you do these things, unless you have this righteousness, you won't even go to heaven. Mm. You won't even enter into the kingdom of God. And that's why it's so important. Now, I was going to ask you, tell us a little bit about your ministry. What's your ministry called? Uh, our ministry is TA Ministries. Uh -huh. And it's uh, designed specifically to do three things. It's designed to inform, uh, to teach, and to equip. It's designed to inform about what is happening in, in the church today. And there are many misconceptions uh, about what verses mean. Uh, many people take Bible verses out of context and so we're in, informing people uh, as to how to read their Bible and how, how to interpret the Bible. Uh, then to teach, uh, you, to dig into the scriptures and to show people how, how to you know, it rightly divide the word of truth. And then that brings them to the stage where they can be equipped to go out uh, to be able to tell others and you know, to teach others. Mm. And you also have a, um, a website so that people can check these things out? We do. We, we have a website, um, www.taministries.net. Uh, and on that, it has many various um, topics. Uh, some of them are controversial. Some of them are what is happening in churches today. Some things that churches are um, arguing even in amongst themselves. Uh, about certain issues and what we do is we we try to take the churches back to what the Bible said and also what the historic uh, faith once said. We have mm. this verse in the Bible in Jude that faith once delivered mm. to the saints and That's so what right. we do is we, we try to take them back to historic Christianity in the first century and the second century and then to rightly divide the word of truth. Just take what the Bible says in, in a very simple fashion. Now you try and stay in contact with a lot of the churches and, and, and you're more than happy. I've experienced that myself to come out and to share with them some of the experiences and also to be able to talk about some of these topics. You also do that through a newsletter, I believe, because it's not possible for you to be able to go out to all mm. these different places. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about the newsletter? The newsletter is titled diakresis, which is the Greek word for discern. It means it basically means to rightly divide the word of truth. And so in that newsletter, we deal with the issues of the day, what, whatever issues are actually facing the current um, church. Sometimes it could be music. Some churches, uh, they believe in one kind of music and another church might believe in another kind of music. And so what we do is we look at what the Bible actually says about that topic. And th then we try to rightly divide that word of truth. And so on the website, uh, you'll find that all these issues are dealt with and again we're informing, we're teaching and we're equipping. Mm. Where are some of the different places that you've travelled to? Um, we travel basically all over Australia. We get to quite a wide range of churches. Some are conservative and some are not so conservative. We've been to New Zealand, uh, we've been to Fiji and we just go to churches that are interested in a, in a certain topic and they want us to deal with this issue and so we go in and, and we do certain sermons on that issue and we, we provide the pastor with information. A lot of our ministry is actually doing the research uh, and then being able to provide that information to the pastors because pastors are very busy today and they don't have the time to, uh, to explore all these uh, issues the time, uh, that yes. are actually facing the church today. Yes. So this newsletter as well, I forgot to mention, can people subscribe to that? Uh, you, this newsletter is, is free. Our ministry is actually a faith ministry, so we, we don't ask for anything for the newsletter. Um, if people feel to donate, that's fine. Uh, but the newsletter comes out every two months um, and it's free. They can subscribe online at, in, at, at the website or they can email me or, or they can write to me and we will put them on, on the mailing list. Now, as you go from church to church, place to place, city to city, uh, country to country, what are some of the things that you're noticing? What I'm noticing is um, less Christians are reading their Bible and less Christians are reading their Bible from Genesis right through to Revelation. They may open their Bible on a day and they may read a certain part of it, but I think 
sometimes we fail to get the context when we do that. And I, I'm urging Christians to read their Bible from Genesis to Revelation in a chronological fashion and get that full orbed view from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And also, when they hear preaching, when they hear something being spoken, they, they will know their Bible then. They will be able to tell whether this man has uh, taught them the scripture in its context or whether scripture has been taken out of context. The ministry that you're involved in, is it a difficult one? It is a difficult one because we are dealing, we are dealing with controversial issues uh, that, that are facing the church and one church might believe in one thing and another church might believe in almost the opposite at times. And mm. so what we're doing is we are trying to get into the middle of them and trying to bring both sides to look at only what the scripture says. Uh, and so that, that is um, controversial at times, but also we get a lot of people that, that would not agree with us and we don't mind that. We receive a lot of letters, uh, but what we're trying to do is get people to think Basically, our ministry is getting Christians today to think, not mm. to just walk into a church and to accept what, what they have heard. Uh, they need to only accept what they have heard when they've looked at their Bible and they've gone through and they've seen it. That is what is in context. There is a lot of preaching today that is preaching um, scriptures out of context and then ripping another scripture out of its context and joining them together uh, to make this issue what they want it to be. And so, Christians, we're, we're trying to get them to think. Mm. Why is that so important to you? I think because we need to get back to the faith once delivered to the saints. And the Bible says that in the last days, there will, there will be a falling away in the church. We, we, we call this the apostasy. It comes from 2 Thessalonians chapter um, 2, verse 3, uh, where they use this word falling away. It's a Greek word apostasia. And if we're living in the last days, if we believe that, then we have to believe that the church is actually falling away. If that's the case, then there are a lot of misconceptions out there. There are a lot of uh, wrongly dividing the word of truth. And so what we're trying to do is to teach people how to interpret scripture uh, by taking the Bible to be only what it actually says. But Terry, I mean, look, you go to a church, I go to a church. Isn't it enough to simply go to church? I know that my pastor, my priest, my whoever, my minister, he preaches the word of God faithfully. Can't I just simply put trust in the words and the message that he delivers to me? There is a certain amount of trust that you can have in a pastor once you've sat under this preacher, once you've sat under that person and you know that they are just teaching what is there in scripture. There is a certain amount of trust. But even then, not everyone can be perfectly right in everything that they will say. That's true. And so yeah. the individual needs to check what that context is, whether they have taken that scripture out of context. They need to look at the verses before. They need to look at the verses after. They need to ask the question, who is the passage speaking to? What is the passage speaking about? What is the main point of the passage? Uh, these are questions that need to be asked because if we are in the falling away, if we are in the last days, then um, many people will be deceived. And Matthew says this very clearly, that in the last days there will be false um, Christ, there will be false prophets, and they will come and they will preach things that many people uh, will choose to, to believe without having actually checked what the context is. So what I'm getting from this, the gist of this, is that I am personally responsible to what I listen to and what I accept. Is that true? That's true. Everybody, every person has a mind. And what, what we're doing is we're trying to get people to use their mind, not to run with their heart. There's, there's that misconception today that we, that we run with what our heart feels. But the Bible says that a heart is desperately wicked beyond all measure. And who... Who can know it? And so our heart has to be guided by what is in our mind. And so we are trying to get people to think, not in, a, in an over-intellectual level. Mm. You can get into a whole lot of theology. Uh, you can get into a whole lot of intellectualism. Um, but we're just trying to get people to think and to check out what is known in Scripture. Now, that is made a lot easier if people know their Bible, if they are reading their Bible. And that's why the Bible is clear that we need to be reading it. We need to be in the Word daily, every day. So you're, you're saying these things from experience, aren't you? You, you experienced this yourself. You were entrapped in, in yes. something yourself. For how, how many years? The Bible talks about being shipwrecked 
in the faith. Yes. And there was a time in the early 90s when I was shipwrecked because I was just believing what the preachers were saying. I was believing what the TV preachers were saying. I was believing what the preachers were saying over the radio. Uh, I was believing what the pastors were saying in, in, in the churches that, that I was going to. And you had an interest, like you wanted to do the right thing by God. I really wanted to be right in what I believed. And this is what we're stressing today. It's it's not just that you believe, it's not what you believe, it's also why do you believe that? And you can mm. really only understand that uh, when, you, when you're reading the Bible for yourself. In fact, if you, if you know your Bible well, you can pick up error much faster. The, in fact, the more you, you would know your Bible, not just in an intellectual level, but when it's um, gripped your heart and you know that God is actually speaking to you. Now, when you looked at these things, you saw you're challenged and you realized that there was a difference between what you were following and what the truth was. Did that really shake you? Did it really frighten you? It I'm really, just trying to sort of get some of the emotional side because what mm. you're asking people to do here is it's quite serious, mm. you know, and, and it will cause problems. But I'm sure that people, our, our viewers are, are intelligent mm. enough and wanting enough that regardless of how they feel and what will happen, they want to follow the truth. If you are a lover of truth and you find that what you have been taught is not really what the Bible says, there may well be a time of confusion. And that's what I experienced. I went through a few years when I, I actually decided not to go to uh, church. I decided to, to just to read my Bible and to find out uh, whether what I believed was really in the Bible. And that's when I read my Bible for the first time from Genesis right through to Revelation. Uh, and I found that many things that I had been taught, that they weren't really in there, that they were actually pulling out a scripture and twisting that scripture in some way. And again, that's where the misconceptions come in. Now, that was a great time of confusion. It was a time of pain uh, because I realized that I had been duped, uh, that I had um, not really believed what God wanted me to believe. And it was a time of pain, confusion, but it was a worthwhile time to, to go through, to come out the other end and to be sure about what I believed. Do you believe that God was with you during those times? I do. And, and God having taken me through that experience, and that enables me now to go out to other people uh, who are in confusion and to be able to help them. Uh, but, it was, but it was a painful time. And when I was going through it, I questioned God about why couldn't he just show me truth mm. quickly, but he allowed me to go through that time yes. uh, so that I would be able to minister to, to others, I believe. Two things. Did you ever have any doubts now? I mean, looking back now, did you ever have any doubts or any regrets? There were times during that time when I had doubts. I even had doubts whether I was a, actually a Christian. Um, but I knew that I was on a path to finding what the truth was. And I'm still on that path. I still don't have all the truth. Um, but I, I know now that I'm, I'm, I'm very careful about how I read the Bible and I'm very careful to check out what, what is being said. And I think as we come into the last days, that is what Christians really need to be because the falling away is about many people out there having all different ideas. And I think that will grow, that will increase as we come to the times of the end. So Terry, tell me a, a little bit about some of the blessings or the fruits that you've seen in your ministry. Well, some of the blessings have been when people have gone through that confusing time and not really sure what they believe or not really sure why they actually believe it. We've been able to help them through that time uh, because when I went through this time, uh, there was a time when I didn't have anyone there to help me. It was only towards the end of that that uh, you know some men came and and help me through what I had to believe. And so that's one blessing is that we're able to help them, but it's another blessing to see them actually come out of that and to grow in confidence uh, about what they believe in, in the Word of God. And then you see them go on and they may even go into all sorts of ministries and they, they begin to use the giftings that God has provided them. Are you seeing, like every time you go to a different church, are you seeing people there that are really not even Christians? When you talk to pastors, they often probably would not be able to say these things publicly, but they will tell you that in almost every congregation there would be some people who would be there for 
one reason or another. They would be there for traditional purposes. They would be there for religious purposes. Social. But they, and social yeah. especially yes. today. A lot of churches have got into the social activities and that can cause people to sit there and, and not actually be changed from the inside and not actually be born again. And so pastors need, need to be careful of that, that they'd be careful to preach the word um, and at times strongly and, ex and, and teach that you must be born again. What would you say to someone that says, look, I would love to read the Bible, I would love to study it, but I don't have time. I've got a family, I've got a job, you know, I've got so many commitments. And, and I think when I speak to people, I just find that this is really one of the biggest excuses that uh, people tend to come up with. This is a priority that cannot be put down in, in any sort of uh, order. Uh, it obviously, it, you know, we would teach that it's God first, family second, church third perhaps. Um, but in that first one with God, part of that is reading the Bible. Part of that is, it, part of that is knowing what he wants you to understand Knowing, part of that is knowing what you have to believe and, and why. And so reading the Bible must come right up there with top priority. How many times should I read my Bible a week? I believe you need to read the Bible every single day. In fact, I find it difficult to get through a, a day without having read the Word and with, without having prayed. I know that I, I work better, I minister better, I do things much better when that takes place. Now some people might read it of a morning, some people might read it of a night, um, but it's, it's food for your, your soul. And also something else that a lot of Christians might not understand is that the longer they delay in not reading their Bible, they lose the knowledge that they have gained from the Bible. It's not something that, that is kept. Uh, there's a scripture in Hebrews chapter 5 which teaches that the he these Hebrew Christians had to be taught again which means the that they, they had lost right. what they, what they had, had learned. And so it's, this is something that why, this is why we stress that, that people need to read the Bible daily and it needs to be seen just like food, just like the food that you eat off the table. Uh, it, it's a wonderful thing uh, what you're saying and, and I, I believe it 100%. And I find in my own personal life that the more I read the Bible, it's a little bit like an acquired taste. Once you build up a taste for it, you find yourself, you want to do it. You want to do it. And if anything, what I've learned about being a Christian is that I have this wonderful relationship that I can enjoy with my God and my Creator. Mm -hmm. Yes, He wants me to read the Word of God, but I find within me this new appetite for righteousness. Mm -hmm. I find within me this want just to s sit down and spend time with Him. But that, that doesn't just come automatically, does it, like, like a switch? It, it it is a disciplinary thing uh, and it, you know I find it more difficult to pray than I do reading the Bible. I mean I love reading the Bible and that's easy for me but some people find it hard to read the Bible and they might find it easy to pray and this is where the discipline comes in. Uh, I recommend to Christians that they get a set time and a set place and they begin to form a habit in reading their Bible and they will find that, that it will become easier as time goes on. So as you do go from place to place, you're finding that there are more and more people that are not following the truth. You're finding that there are people that are there, as we were talking, that really are not born again. They're coming for one reason or another. There are also churches which are falling away. You, you cited some reference points from the scriptures, from the Bible, which talk about these things um, happening in the last days. Now, we might have some viewers who are listening to this and they're concerned, they're, they're worried about this stuff. What would your words of, of advice be to them? I think people need to realize that we are in, in the last days, uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ could come back at, at any time. And if that's the case, we, we would need to be ready at, at any time. And being ready is being in the Word of God every day and doing whatever God wants us to do. The Bible's a difficult book. Now, I understand that as a story, it's quite simple, you can understand, but it is a difficult book. Are they able to understand this on their own? There are parts of the Bible that are difficult. In fact, there are parts of the Bible that I would find very difficult to preach on. Um, but I would 
suggest that the parts that they cannot understand yet, that they would put that on the shelf and just ask God to show them in, in His time. And I find that that usually works, so pe that they'll be given more and more light as time goes on. Terry, once again, it's been a privilege and a real honour to be able to have you to come to this show and to share some of your insights with us. Thank you. If I can just turn to our viewers and say, we pray and hope that you found this show to be especially informative. Please stay in tune for the very next episode. Goodbye. Thank you.